So as it turns out, we do have a mother bear with two cubs living with us here on the island, which we knew about, uh, but we hadn't really come into overly close contact with them until Sunday morning, where uh, they did make their way up onto the back deck and were very interested in the barbecue. Of course, this woke us up and we, you know, went out into the, into the living room and as soon as, you know, John made some noise, they took off. The mother took off and we saw one of the babies headed out after her and then John took a look out to see what they'd done with the barbecue and said, one of the babies was still stuck on the porch and he was trapped behind one of our deck chairs that was out there. And then the baby, the baby cub, the cub who was out there saw John looking at him and made this noise like, you know, screaming for his mother to come and save him from the big scary man that was looking at him out the window. And it was not a small noise. It was a noise that, uh, strikes terror into your heart and you know I, I wasn't really afraid until that moment and it's that that moment of um, what happens now <laughs> what do we do with a baby cub that's trapped on your deck and mama bear has stopped and you know has turned around and is looking at to see what the problem is and so the cub made two of those sounds and then you know John had sort of turned around to find something to like a long stick to move the chair from far away quickly but then by the time he turned back around again the cub had figured out his way out and was off the porch and the bears they were taking off so uh, and you know once we'd sort of all calm down and the adrenaline had settled a little bit you realize that you know from how quickly the mother took off they really are very timid creatures for their size they really don't want to have much to do with you they're afraid of you this is black bear country grizzly bears are a little bit different where we live here in northern Ontario this is black bear black bear country and you know there is a Ministry of Natural Resources webpage for bears and how to deal with bears and um, you know please don't feed the bears so on and so forth so they live here as well as us and they're a part of the wildlife here and learning how to deal with them is part and parcel of living here 100% the fact that they were on our back deck is my fault and completely due to my complacency with putting away food in the cottage and you know when they are such timid creatures and they they never usually approach the cottage you you sort of lulled into this sense of security where you know on the mainland the bears there tend to go through homeowners garbage all the time and they're a, they're a lot more of a nuisance than they are out here but with the drought this summer, there is very little food on the islands for them. And a mother with two cubs, those cubs are hungry and, you know, she's, she's, she's desperate for food. She's looking for food. So I had left some fruit on the counter as we normally do. I had left fruit on the counter and the bananas were a little overripe. The, apple, the apples were ripening. And you know, the circumstances were just right where we have these, uh, we have a breeze room at the front of the place where the, the doors open and there's a cross breeze that goes right through the cottage and the, the wind just go, can go right through the cottage. And it's lovely on a hot day and there's a breeze, it cools the whole place down. But it also, you know, is a great way to carry scents on the wind and so the the air the wind was just blowing just the right way where it would have blown right through the breezeway right through the doors picked up a scent of the bananas and took it right out you know the the back deck out through our open windows there and the mother bear did actually you could see that she put her paws up on the um 
the door, the door itself, because her claws had made marks in the bottom of the window screen, and then had tried to use her mouth to open, like bite through the, the screen window. And I, I've taken a picture, and I'll insert that here so that you can see. You can definitely see the shape of her mouth on the window. But you know, they're fairly big creatures, so it was not an aggressive attempt to, you know, break down the door and crash inside. She was obviously fairly cautious of what was going on. You know, the scents were probably very confusing to her. She knew that, you know, the human scent is mixed in there. So it, it was not a, you know, a screen that would have stopped anything. You know, the doors, the, the window was only about this big. She never could have fit through. But, you know, if she'd really wanted to, she could have, she could have taken it down. But she didn't. And she ran away immediately. So, we've made some changes. Um, there is no longer any complacency on board. We are, you know, we've put up some reinforcements on the doors. We have now in instituted a no food out of anywhere on the cab on the counters at all times you know the dishes are done immediately the windows behind the kitchen I think for now you know until this is sorted out the window in the kitchen will be kept closed as is the window in that door just to help you know contain smells scents uh, garbage has been taken to the mainland and gotten rid of and the kids are, you know, they know now that whenever they go anywhere outside, they have to carry the bell. We have an old school bell that is uh, one that a teacher used to ring outside for, you know, to call in the kids from recess, and it is loud. It is really loud. So there's the bell, and Nicholas is too small still to go anywhere by himself. So if he wants to go over to my father-in-law's, one of us, you know, an adult walks with him, and we still take the bell. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is. It's not ideal, but uh, seeing it up close and personal like that was incredible. I mean, <laughs> just magnificent animals and the babies were beautiful. So there's respect there, you know, respect and caution as well as uh, um, a little bit of awe was, was awe-inspiring. So. We are being careful. So mom, I know you're gonna worry anyways, and I'm really sorry. I'm sorry I didn't tell you on the phone, but I thought that I would tell you this way so that you could see my face and see that we're totally fine, perfectly safe, and everything's going to be okay. So that's the end of my bear story. And if you're still with me, I promise this is a crafting podcast. I've got lots to share and show, with you, show you today. So we'll head inside and get to the rest of the video. See? Don't feed the bears. <laughs> you know you live in bear country when you have a fridge magnet from the Ministry of Natural Resource about the feeding the bears. So bears.mnr.gov.on.ca in case you're interested. They also give you an 800 number to report bear problems. So we don't have a bear problem as of yet. But, I don't know, we'll have to see. Okay, so thank you for sticking in with me with through all my wildlife stories today. I actually have some really big show and tell to share with you today. And it's not even cross stitch show and tell. But I'm so excited that this is finished that I thought you would all appreciate seeing it. I've mentioned it a few times on the Facebook group, the Friday Off The Grid Facebook group. And I started it three years ago for my mother's 65th birthday. My mother is no longer 65. I've just outed her age as well. So, you know, mom, I am, I am really sorry for today's episode. Not only have I frightened you with the bears, but I've told the stitchers of the floss tube world your age. So, I love you, mom. Um, I finished her blanket. Three years later, it is done. So I don't even I don't even know how to properly show you this blanket. So this is 
this blanket is big enough to fit flat on top of a queen size bed and it's all folded up. So as you can see, lots of nitty goodness here. This is a pattern by Brooklyn Tweed, uh, Jared Flood, and it's called Umaro. And I will put a link to this pattern in the drop down box below. And as you can see, it is a beautiful cable knit. There's, there's, a, there's one cable, there's, there are two cable rows in every pattern repeat. And it's not a single cable, it's actually, you use two cable needles. I fudged it a bit and I got away with just using one cable needle and I fiddled with it so that I could do it with just one needle. And then there is a garter, uh, sorry, not garter, seed stitch border there. So it is done, completely done. The only thing I have to do is I have two ends to weave in, one at the very beginning and one at the very end. Once I weave these in, I will wash it, I will block it, I will put a big bow on it and I'll give it to my mom. Oop, that's actually the back side there. So here's the front side. This is the corner there. You can see the pattern quite well there. The wool that I used was a Cascade Eco wool and it is a massive skein of yarn. It comes in this humongous skein of yarn and I used almost entirely four skeins of Cascade Eco and I, um, I love it. I just love it. I want to knit one for us, but I might not start it for a little while. We'll give this pattern a little break for a little bit. So this is the reason why I didn't get a whole lot of stitching done over the last two weeks because I really made a big push to finish this. And Kathy, my sister-in-law, being here for the last week was instrumental in keeping me motivated and pushing me to finish. That's actually a really good shot there of a pattern repeat. You can really see the design, how it kind of looks like a four leaf clover there, sort of, imagine. But it's just beautiful. So I know that there are at least a couple of people out there who have similar projects in their whip basket who, you know, told me as much when I shared this on the Facebook group. And maybe this will inspire you to finish yours. Good luck. I'll be thinking about you. You'll need all your wits about you and all of your motivation. So you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it and finish up those enormous projects. So that's my big show and tell today. And it is cozy and squishy and warm. And I just know my mom is going to love it. Now, finishing this in 40 degree heat with the Humidex off the charts, you know, 40 pounds of, of natural wool on your lap, that's dedication. So it will be washed thoroughly before I give it away because, you know, it was hot. What are you gonna do? Anyway, okay, so that's my, my big, big, big show and tell, but I also had a cross stitch finish. It is not an FFO just yet, but it's an FO. I finished the stitching on my Ginger Gerald windmill. So there it is. Pardon me, mosquito. Because we've had some rain finally, the mosquitoes are getting bad. So I finished, I finished the stitching on my Ginger Gerald windmill. And it is so cute. I learned how to couch, which I had never done before. So that was kind of a cool thing to learn how to do for these long lines that are down here at the bottom. What couching is, is basically you take the one long stitch and then you find a few places along that row, along that line of the stitch to tack it down. So you come up in a hole that is directly underneath where the line is you come up, you put the thread over top of the long stitch, and then you go back down in the same hole that you came up in, thereby tacking it down. And you do that a couple of times along the row. At least that was my understanding of what couching was. So if I have that wrong, feel free to correct me 
in the comments below. So the stitching is finished. Hooray! So Gerald, thank you for designing such a cute pattern. I really enjoyed it. So at some point over the next two weeks, I hope to turn this into a bookmark. That's my plan. And then I will keep it with me. So stitching, a little stitching finish, a big blanket finish. It's been, it's been a good couple of weeks. I know that I was, for whips, I know that I had said I was gonna work on shades of blue. I did work on shades of blue. I put in exactly one length of thread and then I started the second length of thread and then I just, because I was knitting so much, I was getting in very little stitching and when I was stitching, I was, it was late and I was tired and this just was, this is not the pattern to work on when you're tired. So all I did for shades of blue and you can see where my, where my new thread has been put in there was I started this, this diamond here, and that's it, that's all I did. So, a couple weeks ago, I finished a few of these motifs down here for my Friday off the grid. So I've, I've barely made any progress on this at all. But it's not getting put away just yet. I'm not finished, I'd like to put a few more threads in it before it gets tucked away and packed up. Before we know it, it's gonna be time for me to pack up and think about going home. It's the 7th of August today, and Labor Day weekend is when we pack up and go home, so the kids start school again on the 4th of September. So it's less than a month away already. The summer is half over. It is flying, flying, flying by. So that's my shades of blue one more time, just because it's so pretty. This is almost all of the stitching. I'll run roll it just a little bit, then you can see what I've got done there beauty 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 love it okay the other thing that I've been working on because I needed something that I didn't really have to think too much about was a kit that I picked up in New Jersey back when I visited Ginger Gerald and these are supposed to be a set of four coasters and I am NOT going to be stitching them or using them as coasters I can't imagine anything I would rather less put my drink on than one of these beauties so I started with the bluebird and as you can see these these are in these are full coverage which I, I kind of love it's like you know coloring in the blanks right and so when you're tired and you don't want to think you can just pick the background color and just fill it in just stitch it in so I started I actually was working on this upside down because it's at the top of the fabric and you can see there's my bluebird so far so at the top was all of that block color easy easy peasy and so when I was super tired or you know I did quite a bit of this on Sunday evening so I was still a little bit you know out of sorts thinking about the bear and making sure you know thinking doing a checklist in my head have I put everything away what else can I do that just being able to pick one color and just make tiny little X after tiny little X was exactly what I needed so this is an 18 count Ada. Uh, it came with the kit. I'm just using the fabric that came with the kit. The, the name of the designer or the, the, the company that put out this kit is actually not on the cover page, but I did find it on one of the pattern pages and they're called Stitches in Miniature. And I will I'll make sure that I edit that information onto the screen and I'll put it in the drop down box below in case you're interested in this. So these four birds were based on a painting. They were inspired by a painting by Thomas Koch Ruckel, or Ruckel, however you pronounce his name. But that little painting there is what those coasters are based upon. So these little birds were inspired by that painting right there. So. 
my little bluebird of happiness was exactly what I needed. So it's been fun. It was nice to work on that. And that's it for me. I was doing some sewing, a little bit of sewing. Kathy was doing a little bit of sewing. We had some Evertote, a bit of stuff to do. She brought up with her a pile of bags, um, large handle bags, but I'll get to those in just a minute when I do the shop update because I got the rest of my birthday haul in the mail. So I, I'm just gonna quickly share it with you. I know not everybody loves seeing haul, so I'll be quick, but I knew that uh, those of you who do like to see it might be as excited about it as I am. So the first one, I don't know which one to start with. This was entirely Emily's fault, eclectic possessions, because when I watched her stitch with me and she was working on this, because I had seen the pattern before and it didn't, I thought, oh, that's kind of cool, but it didn't grab me. And then I saw Emily working on it. I saw her actually stitching it and I happened to be with Letitia at the time, and Letitia said, oh, I have that pattern. It's fantastic. That was all I, <laughs> that was all I needed. Um, so, a peacock, a unicorn, a badger from thescarletletter.com. So that's the pattern there. And this was from 2017? Yeah, 2017, inspired by early 18th century English canvas work. Full coverage, crazy. And if you look at the back of the book, you can see close up. Some of the detail, there's some satin stitches. The water is satin stitch. And these little weird, weird animals, weird birds. It just kind of, it kind of spoke to me. So I think that's pretty cool. I don't know when I'm gonna start it. It was my birthday. Next was a sampler, Helen Virtue 1812. I know, who am I buying samplers? I thoroughly blame Michelle Bendy Stitchy because I seem to have gotten cotton. I've cottoned on, I've caught the sampler bug. I can't wait to stitch one. Helen Virtue, 1812. And I saw someone on Instagram stitching this and I can't remember who, but I just, I just fell in love with it. The verse, the verse, I'll read it to you. While thus my fingers o'er the sampler rove, the letters form or teach the flowers to blow. Oh, may my soul aspire to worlds above and learn betimes eternal things to know. And the border, look at the border and the big giant house. It doesn't get any better than that. Big giant house, gorgeous floral border and a perfect verse. Can't wait. It's gorgeous. So, last but not least, This, this was my, my, my parents gave me some money as well for my birthday. And so this is what I purchased from them. So this was from them. So mom, once again, I'm dragging your name back into the podcast. Thank you. Thanks mom and dad. This was from you. This was my birthday gift from you. Sarah Dutnell, 1818. And it's kitted up. So I got the linen and the silk thread with it. It's a tree and it's gorgeous. It is simple. It is my colors. It is beautiful. And I'm, I'm in love with it. I'm just in love with it. This is an older one. This is from 1985. So. This kit was done up in, well, I mean, it was first printed in 85. And this is gonna be done on a 35 count linen. And they do their own linen, so, and, it, and it's nice. I've taken everything out and sort of pet it and, and looked at it closely, and it's just lovely stuff. 
Lovely, lovely stuff. Okay, last but not least to share with you today was a book that I talked about with Kathy on Friday. And this was a book that I purchased one for her for her birthday and I got a second copy for myself so that we could look at them together and maybe choose a project together and work on them together. So this is called Handmade Getaway. This book was put out by uh, two women who I, I believe they're the owners of the workroom in Toronto, which is apparently a pretty wonderful space where all kinds of crafty goodness and classes and lessons and you know beautiful things to purchase and look at. Uh, that's their shop, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know that this book is widely available for purchase because I got my copy from uh, Suzanne at Knit Stitch in London, London, Ontario, my, my home. And on the inside cover, it says that it is limited edition. This is number 298 out of 2000 copies. So Getaway Press. So this may have been self-published and I know they had a Kickstarter fund in order to publish this. So I'm not sure how easy this book is going to be to find, but I know if you contacted the workroom in Toronto, if there are any copies left, um, they would probably be the place to start. It is the most beautiful photography, the most beautiful projects. Um, you know, there are some placemats in here there are these framed napkins where they actually make the fabric with this special process where they um, they dye the fabric using this, what's it called? Of course, the name of the, the way they did that completely escapes me now. So hang on and I'll just find that quickly so that I can give you the right name. And I'll edit this out so that you're not staring at me for 10 minutes. Bloop, 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 bloop. Cyanotype. Cyanotype printing. 136. 136. There. Cyanotype printing. So they actually print using flowers and leaves and, and anything else that they that they want to on the fabric and then they use the fabric to create beautiful projects with. So that's just one of the, the beautiful projects in the book. Again, the photography is very well done. The pages feel good. They're that nice thick paper. You know, a book that you like to keep on your on your um, coffee table to admire and community quilt just beautiful pictures gorgeous so anyways Kathy and I had fun looking at our books and dreaming about future projects together okay so that's it for birthday stash and haul, and it will be a long time before there is any more because, well, that's usually my, my way of doing things. I kind of splurge on my birthday and then uh, keep my pennies close until Christmas time. Anyway, enough of that. I have a little bit of a shop update today. I am working on some new things. So what I've decided to do is do a separate shop update video um, on Thursday. I have done this before, but I, the, I think the last time I did it was at the beginning of June. So Kathy brought a bunch of large handled wedge totes. So any that aren't sold by Thursday when I sit down to do the video, I will show in better detail. But just so you get a quick idea, this is the size of them. So. This one is in front of me, and I love this one. It's like Candy Crush. Boxed bottom, so it's nice and wide, generous at the bottom. A generous, shaped, shapely bottom. Lovely zip, and then this really sweet, 
green herringbone on the inside. Now, it, ooh, it's really blowing out there. It's, I promise it's not quite this neon in real life. But a beautiful royal blue twill handle, and there is a pocket on the front, deep enough for a phone, fit all your crafting in, and we put an O-ring on the side. So I, she had brought 15 bags, and at least half of them are sold. So this is one of the ones I have left. Another one is this treble clef print. I have these two because they have the same color twill. The other ones are in my sewing room and I'll show them on Thursday. So this lining on this one is a beautiful purple dot. Sweet. Okay. The only other thing for the shop update today to mention, I have one bag that I'm gonna take a few bucks off of on the site. This is a, this was a bag, a set that I had up a month or so ago with the windmill, the old, not windmill, excuse me, the water wheel, the water mill, what is that? You know what I mean, the water wheel, and the old mill, there we go. This bag I had made along with all of the others and then I realized that it had a flaw in the liner. And so I couldn't sell it with the others because it wasn't perfect. I'll show you. I'll show you on screen here, but I am gonna take a better picture of it on the listing itself. You can see right here, there's a small flaw in the lining. It's hard to see, but it is there. And so um, I will be putting this set up um, at a small discount because it's still the same amount of work and the flaw is on the inside but it is still there it's not a perfect bag but it's still awfully pretty so I thought maybe somebody might still like it and give it a good home and that's it so I will record another video on Thursday night once I've done a bit more sewing Kathy also brought me a stack of lovely drawstring bags for knitters um, I love mine for sock knitting. They're the perfect bag, perfect size for a pair of socks, and they travel beautifully because the drawstrings make excellent handles. I'm going to be listing those probably Thursday morning, but maybe not all of them because there's quite a few. I'm going to get to as many as I can, but I also do still have some sewing of my own to finish. I have some new uh, medium cross stitch sets coming out, and I'm working on a an exciting set that I'm going to be releasing probably towards you know the end of the third week of August beginning of the end of August I'm not quite sure about the timing on things yet everything has to sort of come together but if you like blue and you like a good story there's going to be a story to my set as there is with most everything that I do there's always got to be a story and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit excited about it. So more information on that as it comes. So I'll see you on Thursday for a shop update. I'm sorry there is still no knitting video. You have, so those of you who have been knitting mittens don't have a thumb yet. There are those of you who just couldn't wait. And I'm so glad that you didn't wait and you went on and you figured out how to do it yourself, which is awesome. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. The mitten is very small, but it will fit Clara perfectly. So I plan on those being Christmas presents for her. So I better get on and do them anyways. So as soon as I can, I'll put out that video on the thumb, picking up the stitches for the thumb on the mitten. But it probably won't be this week. Doing my best. There's just too many things to do that are fun. Super fun. And how do you choose? It's hard to choose. That's it for today. Have a wonderful Monday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Tuesday floss tube. I lost yesterday all the way. All the way. It's gone. Today's Tuesday. And by the time this is up, it's probably almost going to be Wednesday. So I'll see you Thursday. <laughs>